one second to get started. All right. So welcome everybody to our uh, webinar today. Um, thank you to all of our um, American attendees who are joining us right before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. And uh, welcome to everybody else as well from wherever else you might be in the world. I see a lot of Canadians in the chat as well. Um, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna be talking about some practical applications for AI in HubSpot that you can take with you going into 2025 and the end of this year. Um, I hope that you're able to get some really useful uh, tips and tricks from this uh, presentation. We're doing some live demoing as well of the tools. All right, so let's get started. So on our agenda today, we have four simple things. <laughs> we do some really quick introductions. We will talk about a general overview of HubSpot AI. Um, then we're gonna dive right into those seven AI tools, uh, reviewing and demoing what are the tools you can actually be using this year um, and then in 2025 to help your team be more productive and effective in HubSpot. And then we will have room for q and I'm going to start the Q&A right now regardless. So please feel free to use the Q&A. You'll see it pop up right in a moment. Um, and so as soon as that has uh, started, you are free to use the Q&A throughout the presentation. Try to keep an eye on that and um, uh, answer questions as we go. But we do have a Q&A period towards the end um, of the presentation. So if there's anything we don't get to, uh, during the live presentation, we will uh, address that at the end as well. So please use the Q&A uh, for your questions. Okay. I'm on the wrong screen. Okay, so quick introductions, your hosts. So hi, everyone. My name is Erica. I, I am the Revenue Operations Manager um, at Flawless Down, powered by GSI. Um, and I have been working in HubSpot for just over seven years now. Um, I use HubSpot all day, every day. And I am also a big fan of some of the AI tools that uh, HubSpot provides, as well as some of AI tools in general. Um, I think there's a lot that AI can do for us, but I also um, understand that there are a lot of things that AI does that aren't necessarily, um, you know, the cho right choice for everybody's company. So that's why I wanted to go over uh, some of those options today. I have with me today, um, Tony, who is our marketing coordinator. Yeah, so hi everyone. I'm the marketing coordinator at Flawless Inbound, as well as the parent company, GSI. So. I, as a marketing coordinator, I'm running a lot of campaigns, managing a lot of campaigns simultaneously um, across all business lines. So HubSpot AI has been a real lifesaver in terms of helping me manage all the different assets associated and kind of really reducing the time it takes to create those assets and publish them. So um, it is really interesting. I'm really excited to uh, show you guys some of the tools I use on a daily basis to make my day-to-day -day easier. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So who are we? Just a really quick note. Who are, who, where are we from? Um, we are your sales and AI user group, that big long phrase. See how you can shorten it down to leader. Um, we're Flawless Inbound, powered by GSI, our parent company. We're a HubSpot solution partner. Um, we have advanced implementation certification uh, amongst our team. Um, we also have unique accreditations from HubSpot for onboarding as well as customer integrations. Um, so those are some, um, you know, special uh, accreditations that we have received over the years from HubSpot. Okay. So AI in HubSpot, what do you need to know? Okay. So there are a lot of AI tools um, in HubSpot, especially there have been a lot more introduced in the last um, even few months since inbound in September, and they're going to keep being introduced because we all know that AI is sort of, you know, the big topic um, for this year, and it will continue into next year being the big trending uh, item. So it's important to understand that even though there are, you know, probably hundreds of the AI tool use cases, um, not in HubSpot, but across the suite of tools that your company might be using, um, you need to know which ones are actually going to be useful for you, um, you know, in the in the current moment. Which ones can your team actually just jump into right away, start using, start seeing value, um, you know, start 
helping them be more efficient, more effectively use those tools, et cetera. Um, and so we wanted to sort of find seven of those tools, find a few of those tools. We ended up finding seven in HubSpot that your team can use right away um, to get started. But before we jump to the seven, Tools. Just a quick couple of important notes about AI, and Shani is our AI content user, so I'll let her start with the content portion. Yeah, so as Erica mentioned, AI is definitely a big buzzword, and you know all companies are trying to go to market with their different AI solutions. Um, but in terms of a content standpoint, AI content should not be the final version. It is a great brainstorming tool. Um, and it's a great starting point for developing your content and coming up with ideas. But um, we don't recommend that you just simply copy paste whatever AI is generating. Um, you can brainstorm, you can optimize, you can iterate and iterate until you find a uh, you know, final version you like. But um, it won't serve you very well to just copy paste and not check for any redundancy, redundancies or inaccuracies or whatever it is. So customize the content to your unique value proposition, to your target audience, um, and keep iterating as well uh, with that human touch. Um, and also there is um, the side of just accuracy. So oftentimes AI just feeds off the information you give it, you feed into it. So uh, you do have to make sure to proofread and double check and make sure there are no inconsistencies in the materials it generates. All right, thanks, Johnny. And then the second thing that we get a lot of terms of AI is AI and data privacy. Um, this is a individual, uh, you know, by company, company by company basis thing. It is up to you, to your company and your legal team, your um, data privacy team to decide if AI based information gathering tools, um, you know, intent data tools and things like that are acceptable for your company to use. That is something that you'll need to consult with your team. Um, for but if you do have questions about um, HubSpot's AI and the way that HubSpot uses AI or gathers that information, um, you can always reach out to your um, HubSpot account manager, account executive, um, CSM. I can't remember the exact word that it's used right now, but uh, if you don't know who that is or you're having trouble contacting someone, um, please uh, you can always let us know. Uh, I have my contact information at the end of the presentation or through the LinkedIn group. You can reach out to us on LinkedIn. Um, we will be able to help you figure that out as well. Um, but um, one thing that's important to note about AI tools in general, it's not uh, just about spots, is that we do use the data that we enter into them to train the AI models. So it is recommended that you do not enter personal or private information into your AI prompts, um, you know, don't be putting information about your specific customers into that AI because, um, you know, you don't want to always be sharing that. And like I said, always consult with legal or data privacy team regarding the AI usage guidelines in your company. And if your um, company does not have <laughs> AI usage guidelines, that might be a conversation to have with your uh, legal or data privacy team because uh, it's just going to become more and more important. Okay, so bring stuff out of the way here. <laughs> what are the seven options for AI in 2025 in HubSpot that we think you could be using now, that your team could be using now? All right, so we've got Content Remix, that is a tool. Uh, personalized out Email, that is a way to use um, Copilot, which we'll be demoing for you. Uh, researching your company's in-platform, so that means using HubSpot, while you're inside HubSpot, you can do research with AI. Web prospecting, so that means um, going out on the web and prospecting for potential new um, contacts or companies using the HubSpot AI. Preparing for meetings, um, intent data, so that is um, you know finding your website visitors, and then your customer service inquiries, which is a the new customer agent, which I think is actually really awesome, and I'm excited to show you guys today as well. So those are our things. And I'm going to pass it over to um, Shani to dive into the two items for AI for content, uh, which is content remix and personalized outreach uh, generation. So I'll stop sharing my screen and pass it over to her. All right, so I'll be demoing those two content related tools. Let me just start sharing my screen over here. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. So um, I'll be demoing these two tools, Content Remix and then um, the function of personalized um, outreach email. So these are two tools that make my life much easier um, by minimizing the amount of manual and repetitive work associated with maintaining a marketing funnel. So we're going to start with Content Remix over here. You can find this in your Content Hub over here um, in the Remix section. This is a test portal, so we are limited by the availability of data we have um, with us. So uh, we'll just kind of take you through how you would um, create um, the different content formats here. So there are some available templates, but we're going to go ahead and start from scratch, um, start remixing, and then add content. So what Content Remix does is that it you feed a singular piece of content into the system. And then it reformats that into a broad range of various content types, videos, audio clips, um, images, blogs, emails, ads, social media, pretty much anything a marketer could want or need to distribute. Um, so here, you know, you can take larger video files, convert it into smaller video, same thing with audio, image, but we're going to um, use a web page for the purpose of this demo. So. Um, in this case, I have the flawless inbound sales enablement web page here. Um, there is quite a bit of information here about sales automation, sales efficiencies. So um, HubSpot has plenty to work with here. So there are a variety of different ways we can upload this content. Um, if this is connected to your HubSpot portal, you can actually access the pages directly hosted on your HubSpot here. So just pick uh, the pages available from the tab or you can start from new text. So you can copy paste um, content from somewhere else or just type it out here. You can upload new document files from your device or we can start from a URL here. I'm gonna pick URL because um, this really shows the very best of the tool and how efficient it is. Um, so in a matter of seconds, you add the content here, it reads all the information in, that, in the URLs page and queues it up for repurposing. Um, so yeah, it took it took a very incredible short space of time to gather all of that information. You click the plus button here, and now you get to start repurposing into various content types. So you have about nine options here. Um, and all, a lot of this is dependent on what you have connected to your HubSpot account. Um, but you can kind of pick up to six content types to reformat into in one go. So let's see, uh, For we're gonna do four here. So I'm gonna pick a blog post. Um, let's go with one email and you can kind of go up to nine here as well. Um, so honestly, just it really drastically cuts down the time it requires to create those assets and you don't have to do it from scratch and you can um, engage your audience on multiple channels um, and it takes you know, very little time to create all these um, assets. So we're going to do, do two social posts, uh, one email and one blog post. And then, um, so what the tool does is that it takes all the content from this web page here, and it's going to reformat that into each um, of those assets that I assigned on the boxes here. So I'm going to click next. Um, and now it's going to, bring up um, instruction boxes, so prompt boxes. So here you want to add detail um, as to how you want the asset to look like, what information you want it to contain. Um, so for the blog, let's say I have some prompts prepared actually. So let's say I wanna make the blog more informative and educational. So I can say, make the tone more informative, educational, and maybe the CTA is about um, joining our sales enablement um, HubSpot user group. Um, and then I can kind of um, direct the length as well. So let's say the medium size length. Um, and then this is the email one. So here, um, if your uh, HubSpot is connected to your, um, like you have, you can actually access your custom brand approved email template. So any input you give to the prompt box here, the email generated can actually match the template you have on your HubSpot already. Um, so, or you can create a brand new template for inspiration, totally up to you. So in this case, let's say 
make the email more casual, lighthearted, and focus towards 2025. Um, and let's say the CTA should be about following our social media accounts. Alrighty, um, and then we have the two social posts here. So in this case, we have Erica's LinkedIn account connected. So what's cool about this feature is that you can format your social posts based on the account and network you want to post on. So you can kind of customize it for LinkedIn, Facebook, X, Instagram, whatever it is. Um, and the generated post will match the guidelines and the style of that connected account. So for the first social post, let's say the prompt is um, use powerful language and cater it to C-suite. Uh, and you can add as little or as much detail as you like. It really kind of depends on um, how much time you want to spend refining this and um, how detailed you want the generated output to be. For the second social media post, um, let's go with, you know, the opposite approach. So make it friendly, informal, and the CTA should be about connecting with our team and booking a demo. Um, and then you can generate an image in each social post. Um, we're just going to unclick that for now because image generation is kind of a different category here. Um, and then, yeah, so you've given specific prompts for each type of content asset here. And all you have to do is uh, select generate here. So I'm going to just. Uh, uh, my screen so you can see here. So, so um, depending on how big the asset is, um, it might take more time. So for the blog post, it's taking a little bit extra time. But honestly, everything is done in a matter of seconds. So you can see the social here. Um, this is the post. You can, again, save and edit this in your social post generator on HubSpot. You can refine this. You can delete this as well and create another social post if you're not happy with it. Um, so, you know, copy paste it here or just keep iterating it. And you can see the language here is quite informal and friendly, just as we kind of prompted it to be. Um, same thing with the first social post. It was supposed to be more powerful language and aligned with um, catering to C-suite. So, you can see the language and tone is reflecting that. Um, and then for email, you can kind of um, zoom it in here. Um, you can see this is a very short email. So this is a case where you might want to give it more input. And especially if you have a template saved in HubSpot already, um, it will target the content to look like that. So in this case, I would probably make the email longer or give it more input to optimize it. And then this is a blog post. Um, so you can see there is quite a bit of information here about sales automation, sales and marketing alignment. Um, so yeah, just keep iterating this till you get a version you like. Um, this is the test portal, but in your actual portal, um, you can actually use a feature in HubSpot. So you can save and edit this directly in your blog editor. So um, you can close this and then um, the cool thing about this um, feature is that you can actually repurpose and reformat this further. So if you like the content in the blog post, you can break it down into further content assets and then kind of do the same thing with this original source asset as well. So um, that is kind of the nuts and bolts of the content remix feature. Um, what is so incredible about this feature is that obviously like how versatile it is and how many different content types you can reproduce through just one piece of source content and it really enables you to reach a larger pool of people in your audience everyone is on a different channel everyone is using a different platform so you can reach your audience where they are um in their preferred channel through their selected you know uh medium where, where they're where they are the most engaged and um you can kind of just get all those assets up and running in a very short space of time without adding a lot of additional workload to your plate so that about covers it so um do we have any questions on content remix we can also name the remix here 
we can say sales enablement remix demo. All right, don't see any questions right now on the remix, but please drop anything in the Q&A if you have it, or I feel free to reach out again after the uh, presentation. Um, uh, what level of access is required? Um, so the content remix requires a um, content pro license. Um, so you have to have that uh, hub. So content hub pro has to be at your license level. Um, inside of that, I believe that it is a, um, I believe it is a separate permission on its own for each individual user um, within the content hub pro. So if you have content hub pro, you should be able to find content remix um, as a specific permission in your users and teams. Um, but that being said, of course, it does require permission to access the other tools. Um, so you would need to be able to access all the tools that you are touching, like emails, social, things like that. So basically it requires um, all content permissions uh, within your All right, thank you. Okay, so I think that um, Shoni has one more piece of uh, content AI to show you which is going on um, crafting some personalized emails, which is super useful for sales teams. Yeah, um, so we're gonna use a uh, co-pilot for this. So it pops out a chat box and, you know, HubSpot is not the first, um, you know, technology. They're not the first to kind of um, create personalized sales email templates, but the fact that you can do it all on your HubSpot platform, without adding a few extra tabs to your window. I think it's a real time saver. So we're just gonna pop this out, make this bigger. Um, it's a new chat and it, it's actually gonna bring up a few templates that you can play around with. So you can just, depending on the task, um, you can just select a pre a template or just a pre um, written prompt here. So I'm gonna say draft an initial outreach email. So this is really useful for salespeople, for marketers, um, to reach their, you know, reach particular part prospects and make it as personal as possible by feeding it some information. So it already loads up a template here. So all you have to do is kind of like a little bit of a mad lift, just add some um, information and it's going to create a personalized email, um, which is a great starting point as you're developing your sales template emails. So um, create an initial outreach email for my company. So let's say we let's say fall is inbound here. Um, target audience, uh, sales and marketing professionals uh, who are experiencing difficulties with their CRM. Um, our product and services will go with HubSpot support packages. And the call to action is to book a demo. And here you can, you know, add any details about desired length. Um, so, but you don't have to. So we're just gonna go ahead and just for the you know, purpose of the demo, let's just go with the initial output here and see what it looks like. So it's gonna take a few seconds to generate the email. It's usually a little bit faster when you're not uh, screen sharing on a demo. <laughs> it does just take a moment sometimes uh, to generate that. Uh, there we go. All right, so it's come up with the initial output. So you have um, dear recipients and you can kind of tell that it's quite customized to CRM systems here. And then it talks about our product and there is the demo here. Um, and then my name as well. So you can see there are quite all the basic fundamental information you need for the outreach email. It is available in this output. So um, you can, this is a great starting point and then you can kind of add in information, replace, optimize, whatever you need to do to send it out to your desired prospect. Um, you can even customize it further. So I can say um, target the email to the manufacturing industry. Um, and you can even ask it to address the email or to a particular person, like their name, or you can say um, the company's name is ABC Plastics. Um, and then just kind of use that as a prompt and then it's going to generate the email targeted to the manufacturing industry. So you can see how it designs the email. So I recently came across ABC plastics and was in, intrigued by a commitment to innovation in the manufacturing sector. So right off the bat, you know, it is addressing the specific industry. So you can 
really just, you know, um, turn out these emails quite quickly. And if you have to, you know, write, let's say, you know, 20 plus emails a day to different prospects, this kind of tool is invaluable in coming up with these templates and making them as personalized as possible. Um, and obviously we suggest, you know, salespeople and marketers, you know, do kind of take your time, optimize this email to your particular product, to your particular audience, and just um, comb through the content with that human element because you want sales and marketing emails to kind of look more, you know, they, you want them to stand out. And I feel like the human touch can really do that. So um, that is kind of the process to create personalized email templates through Copilot. And as I said, the best part is that you can do this in your HubSpot platform. And then all you have to do is just copy paste it. So if you copy the message, it is copied onto your clipboard and then you can paste it wherever. So um, yeah, it just honestly, you don't have to have a few different additional app tabs open all within your HubSpot platform. And it takes just, you know, a matter of a few seconds to develop them. So um, yeah, incredibly useful tool, I would say. Awesome. Thank you, Shani. Um, yeah. So any questions about um, the content generation, please drop that in the Q&A um, as we continue on. Um, and we'll also have time for some more at the end. So okay. thank you for sharing oh, that. All right. I'm gonna, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to jump back in now and share some um, information uh, from a research perspective. So let's grab this. Okay. So AI for research. This is my favorite things from a sales perspective, uh, what you can use AI for in the platform. So uh, we have two different three different research that can be done using uh, AI in HubSpot. And I'm going to demo these in a moment as well. We have in platform research is you can research companies, competitors and technologies. Um, and more than that, for the prospects that you currently have in your CRM database and understand previous engagements with those contacts. Um, so you can do that with Copilot. And you can do web prospecting with AI, which means accessing HubSpot AI anywhere on the web with the new sales extension, um, which you can start your research using some AI tools right on the prospect's web page. And then we have uh, intent data. So you can find out which companies are visiting your website and specifically monitor target markets with in those companies to understand um, who's visiting the pages, who from what target market is visiting where on your site, and um, get some of that. That's companies only, not uh, contacts, but get some of that information about uh, visits. And then before we jump into the demo, I will just, the next thing I'm going to demo is um, some AI for customer happiness. This is incredibly important because we know that customers expect uh, more and more personalized outreach and fast responses and um, everything like that as, as um, you know, they get more online, we need to be prepared to answer things quickly and um, give them the information that they need um, as soon as possible. So uh, AI for meeting prep, this is something I'll show you in the new sales workspace. You can quickly prepare for by getting a summary of previous activities and notes uh, for your specific contacts. Uh, and then customer service, this is a, a chat bot sort of thing. Um, which allows you to free up customer service time by handling simple inquiries with AI and your existing knowledge base or website um, that is used to train that bot. So I'll show you a demo of that as well. All right. So let's start with the research into Copilot, the same as um, Sean was. Copilot is one of my favorite HubSpot tools. Um, and I think it's really cool for all team members. Everybody gets Copilot. There is no level of access required. Um, it is absolutely useful for anybody um, at any time to go in and grab it. Doesn't matter your license, doesn't matter your access, you can use Copilot. So, what I'm going to do in Copilot today from a research perspective is I'm going to go to search prompts and then I am going to research a company. So now what I can do is I can use a company URL. So I can use any URL from any company um, on the web. So let's just say I want actually HubSpot. Um, so I, I want to research them. So I put that in there and it's going to pull up for me a level of information that it has located about HubSpot. So here, 
we have a whole bunch of information about where they're located, what they do, um, everything like that. Um, and then you can find some of their socials. Underneath here, we can also see the technology. Now, keep in mind that this is like any AI um, in intent or research platform, um, like your Zoom infos and things like that. Um, you always need to make sure that you are verifying this information as best as you can. Um, you know, we see a lot of AI tools where um, something like uh, technology stopped being used last year, but it's still tracked on these in on these sorts of things. So always important to take everything that you read from AI um, and verify as much of the information as you can. Um, but you can also look at the contacts here, so you can see all of that information in more of a chart format if you prefer. Um, so you can, but you then what you can do is you can add to HubSpot. So you can click on that, um, and then this one is saying that this company already exists. In our CRM. So that's awesome. It's going to show me the recipe there. Um, but if it didn't, it would add um, the company to your CRM and then you can use that company um, for sales. So this is a great way to just type in uh, a company piece of company information, a URL, and uh, have a look at everything that is on there, which is really cool. Um, so then you can also view that record. So the, if you click on this, it'll take you direct to the record of the company that that it created in your CRM for you. So that is a really easy way for sales to just use a little bit of AI to start their first initial research about their potential prospect. All right, the next one was researching everywhere. So let's go to HubSpot's actual website. Okay, so, no, that one's not gonna work because I have this. So let's say we are wanting to, um, we're, we're going around the web, we're searching up, um, certain companies, we are going to find um, potential prospects, and we're going to a whole bunch of different people's uh, websites. So I see um, Eventbrite down there. So let's say we are going to Eventbrite. All right, so we're going to Eventbrite. Um, we found their website. As we're prospecting, obviously, do not uh, accompany this large Eventbrite's uh, site. And then we are going to access the HubSpot sales extension. So, I don't know why this doesn't want to come up for me. Oh, there it is. Okay, so the HubSpot sales extension is on the right hand side of your screen. Um, when you click on this, it opens up your uh, CRM there on any website, anywhere on the web. I really love this because it means. You don't have to be jumping back and forth between tabs. And when you're out prospecting, it pulls up that initial bit of AI information about your comp about that company that you're looking at on the web, um, including the description about them, their industry, where they're located, their employees. You can also add them directly to your HubSpot portal as a new company uh, right there. Um, and so I see I do see a question on, in the chat. I will get to that in a moment. Um, so this one also allows you to access the AI by clicking on the little AI, this little star, anywhere you see that, that means it's AI. Uh, when you click on that, you can now um, it's gonna pull up courses already, um, the one chat that we had open previously. But if I start a new chat and I click research company, it's going to pull up the company that I'm already on the web for. So don't even have to type in the URL when I'm acting on the web. I'll open that up and again, it's going to pull up all of that information about that company. Um, it's going to give you the technology that they use. Um, and again, you're able to um, add those to HubSpot, add that company to HubSpot right there, and it'll add that as a record into your CRM. So when you click on that, profile it will take a moment and add them as a record in your CRM that your sales team can now interact with. So I'll click on this and I'll go right to that record um, in HubSpot, which is great. Great. You are able to do specific settings for your um, HubSpot sales um, extend. So you can exclude certain websites from showing up there. You can exclude certain domains, things like that, uh, which make it easy to, um, you know, figure out exactly where you want it to show up. It doesn't have to show up all across uh, the internet. It can only show up websites that you're prospecting, things like that. But that's one of my favorite tools because it just makes it really easy to start when you're on a website, understand what are you looking at? 
um, is this company going to be a good fit to be added to your CRM? So I like that. All right. So question on the research, um, which is, are there any questions or prompts for Bruce to leverage cross-selling, finding customers that could buy a potential add-on that is typically bought with package A? So yes. So the AI in Copilot can um, search through some of your data. Um, Again, it, it is really dependent on the data that you have. I'm not going to be able to demo something like that because I don't have that kind of data um, in my demo portal. But obviously, if you had that data, so if you had, you know, um, a bunch of, of uh, companies with a certain property marked as this property is this, um, you could look those up. So you could say, um, you know, it's not, it's not going to be um, quite so intelligent as to like, uh, search through a whole bunch of different things at the same time, but you could look up people who are a certain property, et cetera, um, and sort of use that as a starting point to find some of those records. So if I go to start a new chat, um, you can do reporting as well, which is uh, where you report on something like that. So you could write a report of all companies with package A, uh, which would then uh, let you look at, um, you know, all companies that might be fit for package B. Um, that's kind of the extent of it right now. Um, it's not gonna, it's not, it's gonna have that like super intelligent uh, over quite yet. But you could generate a report of um, that have are marked as having package A, and then that will help you understand which ones might be good for package B. Okay, so the next thing on my uh, list was the intent data. So the Intent data is actually found under marketing, uh, although I think it is a good sales enablement tool. Um, it's in beta, so you do have to get access uh, to that. Um, so if you don't know how to access the beta, um, let us know. But it's a pretty simple um, search through product updates to access the beta that you want to join. This is the buyer intent. And so again, this is a test portal, so we don't have Copilot's going to stay with me. Uh, this is a test portal, so we don't have all of the um like all of the web connections that we would normally have so we're not going to sell a bunch of data on here. but basically what buyer intent data does is it allows you to enter target markets and intent criteria into your um into your website management so when you add a target market uh you're able to add that by industry keyword employee range country location technologies used or revenue um, I have a couple added to that are example uh, industries. So the finance industry, um, with edit, I can see the specific drill down set for that. So we're looking at financial services industry with a specific employee range located in Canada or the US. Um, I could add other technologies and things like that if I wanted to. I was only looking for people using specific softwares. These are all, there's a ton of options. So search through that. Um, so I can see that out of 3,000 companies that were identified in that market on the web. Uh, only one of them currently exists in my CRM. So obviously there's a massive uh, potential database, a potential addressable market that I can access uh, from here. Then I can add intent criteria, which is specific website pages. So in this case, I'm looking for people who visited my pricing page this month. Uh, you can change all those pages. You can change the minimum number of visits. You can change the uh, time frame. You can have a whole bunch of different paths, different pages that are important to you, or you can have none at all if you just want your website generally. So once you've configured that in your main tab, you're then able to, to use these filters to create views. So this is when you don't have the filters turned on, this is just all of the companies who have been visiting your website. You can see whether or not they're already in your CRM. You can see, you can see their LinkedIn profile. You can view the activity, so you can view what they actually did, what pages did they actually do and when. And then um, you can, this is some more activities you can do uh, with the plus button by adding them to your CRM there. You do need Breeze Intelligence credits um, to do that. So if you want to um, get some extra credits, this is a paid service. You can pay for Breeze Intelligence credits, which will allow you to um, directly add them to companies or do some additional research on some information about the company um, using those intelligence credits. Um, please let us know if you have more questions about intelligence or anything um, like that. But you can then turn on these filters to show you um, in your get 
if you know the companies that are in the target markets and then you can choose which one so which one of these target markets are they in um you can choose which ones have shown intent and when you do that again it'll bring up the pages that you wanted to show that's what the intent means the pages that you selected and then you can also look at all companies or only ones that are not in your crm or only ones that are in your crm there's a couple other things you can filter by as well sources um you know current owners things like that if you want to and then you can save those views so if you are a salesperson and you own the companies and you want which companies that you already own in your CRM are visiting your website you can very quickly um, just go to your specific companies and then monitor them for a saved view and monitor your companies and see where they're visiting your site and what they're looking at uh, if you have like customer service pages and stuff this can be really useful um, and again this becomes even more so buyer intent is available um, I believe to um, anybody with a uh, marketing, I'll, I can double check on the subscription if anyone's interested, but uh, buyer intent is pretty available in general if you join the beta. Uh, but if you do want to act on intent, so add, so enrich the company that you're getting from here or add them directly to your CRM from here instead of just uh, having this as information, you do have to purchase the Breeze Intelligence credits. Um, Yeah, so if, there's a, I see a question in the chat. If you add companies to your CRM, are you allowed to just prospect them via HubSpot under your current privacy laws? So you are, um, because there isn't, um, there isn't anything stopping you currently from going to any website online, getting that website's URL and company name and adding them as a record in your CRM. Um, now, the where it comes down to under privacy laws is and current privacy is where um, how you reach out to them and how you prospect to them so in this case we in companies so there isn't um, it's not a data privacy issue to to bring a company record into your into your CRM and have that company um, where the data privacy issue comes in is when you are getting a contact associated to that company so a specific person um, so that is where you have a data privacy potential issue um, and when when you so if you're researching the company what you might do um and this totally depends on your company's data privacy regulations and also the country that you're located in and things like that um but you might go to you might request to follow them send a message on there um something like that to find a particular contact and then get that contact ask permission to be added to your crm um out and you might be able to go out and send them a cold email um, you know, from your separate email system without putting their data in your CRM, things like that. Um, but you can definitely add companies to your CRM and research the companies to your heart's content without, um, you know, that data privacy being an issue. But it, it, when it comes to contacts, that's where uh, I would consult with your uh, legal or data privacy team to see what's right for you. But there are options there as well. Okay, so the next thing that I have on my agenda is the meeting prep. So the prep is a part of the new uh, sales workspace. Um, so this one says beta, but I do. It's just there for everybody. Um, but the sales workspace is what used to be called the prospecting workspace. They have changed the name of that. Um, so this is the workspace that your sales team can come to every day to see what they have going on today. So if you're using your sales team is using tasks, um, then I absolutely recommend that they come into the sales workspace to use it for what they need to do. So um, they can see the tasks due today, they can see their overdue tasks, and they can see their tasks upcoming tomorrow. They can also see their schedule of meetings, and, and then they can see um, their guided actions. And this is the AI portion that I think is really interesting. So I have, I have this meeting coming up, like this is just a demo, it's fake data, but I have a meeting up uh, right after this. So I'm gonna go prepare for the meeting. What this does is it opens up a, um, a task of meeting prep for me, and it gives me all of this information that I might need to know. So it tells me who's coming, who has responded and who hasn't. Um, it tells me the details. Um, so what was the meeting supposed to be about? And it tells me any deals that are currently associated with that contact or company. So I can see what's going on there. Um, if you have your meeting hooked up to Zoom or Teams directly, you can join the meeting right from here. So when it starts, you can get right there. And then there are some suggested activities. 
So study your customer's company. So that was the same research I was doing before. You can open that up. You can summarize the record. So let's say I want to know about this company that I'm having a meeting with. I'm going to summarize what has happened recently. Okay. So recently I spoke to this contact offerings at a conference. These are based on notes that I have in the uh, CRM. So this is taking all of your notes, phone calls, um, meetings, things like that, and, and making a summary. So recently we spoke to them about the product offerings and they expressed interest in adding these to their deal. So I have a task to follow up with them. Awesome. What I'm doing at this call, I can see all the engagements I've had. I can see all of the meetings, all of the notes, all of the tasks, the calls that I had, and I can get summary of every single one of those actions. This means that I don't have to go wading through the record to find out what I did and when I did it and how it worked, etc. I can just come in here, look at what happened, understand what's going on with that company and get the information I need. It also tells me that some attendees haven't accepted so I can send a new invitation, follow up with them, I'm sure they know, and review any notes that I have left on this lead. So I can, if I made any notes about them, I can open up and look at it there. Um, so I really love this meeting prep because it just gives you a quick run through. You can like check it off like I did this. <laughs> um, and then you can do a quick run through of everything that, that you might need to do as a salesperson before a meeting. And you could get those um, conversations that you've them summarized really quickly so that you don't have to wade through all of those detailed call notes. And now the important note about this that I need to make, I always need to make, is that data in is what you can get out. So you need to enter the information into your call records, into your email records, into your notes. Um, you need to be tracking your emails. You need to be putting meeting summaries into HubSpot. Your team needs to be adding all this information into HubSpot in order to be able to use these sort of summary tools. Um, but when you do do that, I promise it is worth it because it's so much faster to just use this kind of um, meeting than go searching and waiting through all your notes and messaging people and stuff like that. Okay, so the last thing I have before we jump out is the customer agent. Um, so in the last 10 minutes, I will just review this guy. So this is a new um, AI tool, you do need a service hub subscription to, or service hub, need to have service hub to get the customer agent. And so the customer agent is a an agent that is going to use AI to um, answer questions as a chatbot on your website um, by utilizing the content that you have told it to use. So the knowledge base is one of the most useful. If you have services hub and you are you have a knowledge base for your customers to use where they can look up common questions and answers common how to's things like that um you view install your knowledge base into here you sync up with your agent you can then use that for chatting you can also use your website uh, your landing pages your blogs and any other outside sources imported urls be very careful with this um you know you don't want to import a url that you 100% trust as having accurate information to share with your customers. But in this case, because we're in the test portal, I just imported our actual website into here so I can use it. Um, and then what it does is it allows you to chat with the, when your people are chatting, you it says like, um, example, this is a little a bit of a question, but let's say I come on here and I ask, why do I need a CRM? My trial agent is going to search through all of the data that I have synced with it to find the answer to that question. So he says um, he's found all this information about it and it tells you where he got it. So it's from this website page, which is our Why Choose HubSpot page. Awesome. I can ask it something else or I can have it reformulate a new answer if I don't like that as the user. Um, and then in the actual bot version, I would be able to keep chatting. The really cool thing about this is that you can really customize what content is available. So let's say um, this is my website. I can check all this off and I can say, don't use that. These are internal pages. Don't feed this information into bot, right? So I can, or I can check off all, like don't use the website. Um, I can do all of that. Um, I can pick which sources that I want. I think the knowledge base is like the best one. Um, if you have that, you can monitor the performance of your agent. So you can understand how many conversations it actually resolved, how many conversations it deflected, 
um, how many times it handed it off to a human, how many questions it couldn't answer, and the visitor feedback uh, at the end of the chat. So you can really monitor how your agent is doing. You connect it to various channels within your um, within your uh, HubSpot. So if you have a live chat, you can connect it to that. And then you can configure your handoff. So you can um, note when it's going to transfer to an agent. Um, so what does it do when it's when this handoff is happening? How does it handle when the team is away? How does it hand off outside of working hours? Um, so you can really customize all of this information. And you can even customize the you know tone of your bot, uh, how you want it to discuss things and respond to people. So I think that if you are um, using Services Hub, I would absolutely recommend having a look at the customer agent and just getting started with um, either a knowledge base or a series of website pages um, that you can that you can really start with to get that information. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to jump back into this. Um, so that kind of summarizes everything that we have there. Please let us know if you have any questions. I see a couple people have had to jump off already. So if there are any questions, um, please feel free to drop those in the chat or go ahead and follow us on LinkedIn. Um, we have lots of uh, valuable information coming. We have a little ebook um, that has some information about um, this AI that we can share as well, that we will share. Um, so I've got this right here. If you want to join our um, link, you can see that. I also have my email, um, Erica at flawlessinbound.ca. Please feel free to email me or reach out to me on LinkedIn if you would like. I'm in the group so you can find me there. Um, and so uh, we will be having a bunch of more events in the new year. So if you're interested in hearing more about AI or about sales enablement in general, um, make sure you're monitoring, keeping up with your emails in the HubSpot user group. We'd be very happy to, um, you know, if you have anything that you'd like to hear from us, any specific, um, you know, any specific topics you want to cover, uh, we're happy to uh, jump into those as well at any time. All right, so uh, thank you again, everyone, so much for joining us today. It has been great chatting with you. I see a lot of people jumping off, so it's been great chatting with you. We will get going. Please feel free to reach out with any questions at any time, um, and we are looking forward to connecting the LinkedIn group. We will. Oh, I see a quick question. Let me make sure that this is an act. Is this an actual question? Okay, no. awesome. Thank you, everyone. Again, uh, we're looking forward to connecting in the LinkedIn group, and we will see you there. Have a great day.